Thank you all who came out to share with us this all-important message of the signs of the end times, part five. I'm sure you will be enlightened and blessed with more understanding as to where we are in the end times as told in the Bible. So without further ado, let's proceed. In the last episode, we went over the historical prophecies in Daniel chapter 11 of the four kingdoms or empires that would rise to power and rule much of the known world. And these kingdoms are the four kingdoms represented in the statute in Nebuchadnezzar's vision in Daniel chapter 2 verses 24 through 38. The Babylonian Empire, the Mede-Persian Empire, the Grecian Macedonian Empire, and the Roman Empire. These four empires also correspond with the four beasts in Daniel's vision in Daniel chapter 7 verses 1 through 25. The fourth beast the Roman Empire, the dragon, has ten horns, and a little horn arises from it. The angel explains to Daniel his vision of the fourth beast, and the ten horns are ten kings, or ten kingdoms. And the little horn, described with a human mouth and eyes, represents a specific king, who will arise from amongst those ten kingdoms, and he will speak against the Most High and oppress his holy people. And we know this little horn is ruling at the time Judgment Day comes, and he will be the one who sets up the abomination desolation. This little horn of Daniel 7 is the same as the first beast represented in Revelation chapter 13. The beast in Revelation also has 10 horns, and like the little horn of Daniel's fourth beast, John's beast was given a mouth to utter proud words and blasphemies. It opened up its mouth to blasphemize God and to slander his name. It is obvious this little horn is the Antichrist, a world leader who rises to power from within a league of ten future kings or kingdoms. The little horn, which will emerge from the fourth beast, is a fact that suggests in the end times there will be a revival of the old Roman Empire. This restoration, whatever form it takes, will feature a coalition of ten world leaders. The Antichrist will become leader of this coalition of ten world leaders at the expense of three of those leaders, and he will eventually wield global authority and power. He will be a true tyrant. The Antichrist will seek to control every aspect of life. He will even demand to be worshipped. In part four of this study, we mentioned that the ten horns from which the little horn arises will be a block of European nations who will exercise geopolitical and economic dominance. And these European nations will integrate to form a revived Roman Empire. The Antichrist will arise from this block of European nations to become its president, czar, supreme ruler, or dictator of this European Union which will be the revived Roman Empire. As it says in Revelation chapter 17, verses 8 and 11, the beast that was and is not and yet is. This is a reference to the revived Roman Empire. How do we know that these 10 horns are 10 European nations that will revive the Roman Empire? Well, let's find out. As we went over last week, the book of Daniel predicted a succession of great empires that would continue all the way to the time of the end. And each of these empires were symbolized as a horn. God uses the symbol of a horn as a ruling power, especially in end time prophecy. For example, the angel told Daniel the meaning of the symbol of the horns were that of ten kings. During the time of the Babylonian Empire, Daniel foresaw the rise of the next two empires, the Mede-Persian Empire, which appeared in his vision as a ram with two high horns. This ram would eventually be defeated by a goat from the west, with a notable horn between his eyes. It came toward the two-horned ram I had seen standing beside the canal, and charged at it in great rage. I saw it attack the ram furiously, striking the ram and shattering its two horns. The ram was powerless to stand against it. The goat knocked it to the ground and trampled on it, and none could rescue the ram from its power. The goat became very great, but at the height of its power, the large horn was broken off, and in its place 
four prominent horns grew up toward the four winds of heaven. Now the angel Gabriel tells Daniel, the two-horned ram that you saw represents the king of Media Persia. The shaggy goat is the king of Greece, and the large horn between his eyes is the first king. The four horns that replaced the one that was broken off represents four kingdoms that will emerge from his nation, but will not have the same power. So we know the goat represented is the kingdom of Greece, and the horn represented is Alexander the Great, the third beast. The four horns that came up after the large horn was broken are Alexander's four generals who divided up the Greek empire into four kingdoms after Alexander's death. Of these four Grecian rulers, two of them became superpowers, the Seleucid dynasty and the Ptolemaic dynasty, which we went over last week, while the other two were absorbed into the other's kingdoms. The Seleucid dynasty would become the king of the north and the Ptolemaic dynasty the king of the south. Now in the very next verse of Daniel 8, verse 9, it tells us that this little horn, who is the Antichrist, will come out of one of these ruling kingdoms of the north or south. And we must keep in mind, there are both Grecian empires. Daniel 8, beginning at verse 9, Out of one of them came a little horn, which grew exceedingly great toward the south and toward the east, and toward the pleasant land. It grew until it reached the host of the heavens, and it threw some of the starry host down to the earth and trampled on them. Yeah, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down because of rebellion. The Lord's people and the daily sacrifice were given over to it. It prospered in everything it did, and truth was thrown to the ground. Then I heard a holy one speaking, and another holy one said to him, How long will it take for the vision to be fulfilled? The vision concerning the daily sacrifice, the rebellion that causes desolation, the surrender of the sanctuary, and the trampling underfoot of the Lord's people. Now we know that this is not speaking of any past king. As it mentions, he would throw some of the starry host down to earth. And that reference is a direct reference to Satan that caused a third of the angels in heaven to be cast down to earth with him. It also says he magnifies himself even to the prince of host, who is Jesus. This again is a reference to Satan. So we see that this passage is giving us an insight into somehow Satan will possess the Antichrist and not just control him. So now we see in Daniel 8, verses 9 to 13, it tells us that the Antichrist will come from the area of the once established Grecian kingdoms of the Seleucid and Ptolemaic dynasty. Now in 65 BC, the Roman Empire defeated the Seleucid dynasty, and in 30 BC, it defeated the Ptolemaic dynasty. So both the king of the north and the king of the south these Grecian empires now became part of the Roman Empire, the fourth beast. And this little horn, spoken of in Daniel 7, comes out of the fourth beast from within the ten horns. And again, the angel tells Daniel in Daniel 8 that this little horn will come out of the division of Alexander the Great's empire, which were the Ptolemaic dynasty and the Seleucid dynasty, who are now part of the Roman Empire. So it's obvious these references tell us that the little horn, or Antichrist, is coming out of the Greco-Roman Empire, Greece and Rome, which is located in the province of Europe. This last revival of the Roman Empire will be a combination of ten leaders in Europe who will come together to form a short-lived resurgence of this fourth empire spoken of in Daniel chapter 7. What we must understand is the Roman Empire was never defeated or conquered, rather it simply disintegrated from within. The main cause of the collapse of the Roman Empire were Anglo-Saxons and Franks, Germanic tribes that began to rise up against the Roman leadership. 
who then incorporated into Rome's empire and began seizing political control. There was also the lack of money or wealth to sustain the empire. So the Western Roman Empire collapsed and the Eastern part of the Roman Empire was renamed to the Byzantine Empire. And the Byzantine Empire was then renamed Constantinople after its emperor, Constantine, who had allegedly converted to Christianity and he assembled the first general council of the Roman Catholic Church, that of Nicaea. And in many ways, the Roman Empire was replaced by the Catholic Church. Now, that's a whole nother study that we'll do at some later time. Now, since the Antichrist rises from the fourth beast with ten horns, which is the Roman Empire, and since the Roman Empire has been defunct since the fifth century, it stands to reason that the Roman Empire will be revived in some way. This revived Roman Empire is linked to the final kingdom noted in prophecy, which comes from the fourth empire shown in Nebuchadnezzar's dream of the statue ventured in Daniel chapter 2. If you notice, the iron legs in Nebuchadnezzar's statue is the Roman Empire, which has feet made partly of iron and partly of baked clay. The fact that iron runs through the feet tells us the legs are still connected to the feet, which then tells us it is still connected to the fourth kingdom, which is the Roman Empire, and the ten toes imply a ten-nation confederacy, matching the ten horns in Daniel chapter 7 verse 20, which lead to the single powerful ruler coming from within those ten horns or those ten feet. On a side note, What's interesting is that the Roman Empire was the agency through which Christ was crucified in his first advent here on earth. In the end times, it will be the reestablished Roman Empire through which Satan will work through at the time of Christ's second advent here on earth. Just food for thought. Now let's look at some current historical facts. The European Union was founded as a result of the Maastricht Treaty on November 1st, 1993. It is a political and economic union between European countries that sets policies concerning members, economies, societies, and laws. The original member states, which were formed in 1951, were known as the European Communities. These inner six, or simply called the Six, were Belgium, France, Italy, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, and West Germany which was later joined by Greece, Portugal, Spain, and Great Britain, the original ten nations of the European community. And they viewed themselves as translatio imperia, which means transfer of rule. And that transfer of rule refers to the defunct Roman Empire. Their political philosophy was thereby to resurrect Rome in the West. This political philosophy was to make them above national rule over the continent of Europe. Here's an interesting fact. If you check the list of some of the countries that were part of the Roman Empire at the time of the Apostle John, they correspond with the countries today. Visigoths, Anglo-Saxons, Franks, Alamini, Burgundians, Lombards, Suave, Heruli, Ostrogoths, and Vandals. In 2002, a convention was held for the future of Europe, and a European Union constitution was drafted. The European Union constitution called to install a European president, but the call for a European president was not initially accepted by all the countries. They initially rejected it when several countries failed to ratify it. However, over the next several years, the European Union continued to push what is known as the Lisbon Treaty to install a European Union president. So by 2009, all states ratified the Lisbon Treaty and Herman van Rompuy of Belgium became the first president of the European Union. On March 8, 2015, the president of the European Union John Clyde Juncker, in an interview with the BBC, stated, The European Union needs its own army. Such a move would help the European Union to persuade Russia 
that it was serious about defending its values in the face of the threat posed by Moscow. He went on to say a common army among the Europeans would convey to Russia that we are serious about defending the values of the European Union. By September 2021, the current European Union president, Ursula von der Leyen, along with the president of the Italian Republic, the Italian prime minister, the prime ministers of Greece and France, all came out in support of fast-tracking a European army. The European Union president, Ursula von der Leyen, reportedly told German radio, our future as Europeans will one day be a European army. Now let's look at the comment made by John claude in 2015 stating his reason for Europe needing an army to face the threat of Russia, to convey to Russia that they're serious about defending European values. Fast forward, look at what's going on today. Russia invades the European country of Ukraine, who at the time was not a member of the European Union. However, after Russia's invasion of Ukraine in a historic development, the European Parliament accepted Ukraine's application to join the European Union on March 1, 2022. A special admission procedure was implemented to admit Ukraine into the European Union. People, these events are but building blocks put into place to bring about the fulfillment of the end-time biblical prophecy. Not only will Europe ultimately have an army, it will be a conquering army, and we see it forming right before our very eyes. The Bible prophecies tell us that in the end time, a block of European nations will integrate to form a revived Roman Empire. The Bible refers to this future world power as the beast. And when speaking of the political and military dictator of that empire, it also calls him the beast. This is in line with other prophecies of kings and the kingdoms they rule being referred to as beasts interchangeably. This end time European power described in the book of Revelation has some major differences with the European Union that we see presently today. There are obviously many developments that would need to occur to transform today's European Union into this beast or coming power. Here are some things we know about this future power. It will contain a core of 10 nations or groups of nations. The European Union currently has 27 nations, so today's European Union will somehow inevitably unravel. Two, it will have a very powerful military. As we know currently, the European Union does not have a military at this time. Number three, it will be an economic superpower dominating the world's economy. We'll get to that later in our next episode. Number four, it will be allied with a powerful religious leader. It shows us this in Revelation chapter 17. And this woman that's sitting on a scarlet beast is symbolic of a religion or a church, which many believe to be the Catholic church that will be in league with the beast. We will go into that in further detail in our next episode. Now, what's interesting about this also is in May 2016, Pope Francis was awarded the Charlemagne Prize. This is a prize awarded for work done in the services of the European unification. It has been awarded since 1950 by Germany. It commemorates Charlemagne, who was the ruler of the Frankish Empire and founder of what became the Holy Roman Empire. Put a pin in that. Again, we will discuss that in our next episode. I believe prophecy is clear that the Ten Horns are the Ten European Nations representing the revived Roman Empire, from which the Little Horn or the Antichrist will arise and be given political, economic, and military power. So in terms of the signs of the end times, we are witnessing the end time prophecies of the beast taking shape before our very eyes. The geopolitical events that are taking place right now are prophecies coming into focus. However, we must keep in mind, as events unfold, many are but links in a chain. Each link is what forms the chain. 
because we see one event unfold does not make the chain complete. And some events are but building blocks that give way to other events that ultimately lead to the outcome of another event. Years ago, the Lord showed me that future prophecy is like looking at mountains from a distance. They look like they're right next to each other, even touching. But the closer you get to the mountains, you realize they are miles apart. Now we're going to stop right here and pick up where we left off in our next episode where we will discuss the false prophet, the mark of the beast, and all other prophecies in Revelation. But before we go, I would just like to say that we just laid out that the Antichrist will arise from somewhere in Europe, and the European Union is the beast spoken of in the book of Daniel and Revelation. We must still understand and keep in mind the right perspective as Christians, and that is our primary focus is to spread the gospel and not try to identify the Antichrist. However, we can read the signs of the times, as Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 16, verse 3. And with the current events taking place right now in our world today, we see end-time prophecy taking shape and unfolding before our very eyes. This should only make us even more diligent to share the gospel with as many as we can. May God bless and keep you, my friends, in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Thank you for tuning in to Fellowship in the Word. If you've been blessed by this video, please click the subscribe button and the bell to receive notification of when we upload new videos. Thank you and God bless you.